Decision 2016. Donald Trump is now our president-elect. What does the transition look like, and what can we expect from Trump's first 100 days in office? We've got experts live in the studio to weigh in. And protests are up across the country, students marching out of class, demonstrators in the streets. The results of this election causing turmoil across the nation. We'll talk to an expert about how or if President-elect Trump will promote unity before his inauguration. This special edition of District Wire News, this is in 2016, starts right now. Good afternoon, I'm Wes Young. And I'm Stephen Penchak. President-elect Donald Trump is naming Chairman of the Republican National Committee, Reince Priebus, as his Chief of Staff. Priebus is credited with uniting the Republican Party behind Trump. Following the Access Hollywood scandal, Republican leaders encouraged Priebus to distance the Republican Party from Trump. Priebus instead continued to support the nominee. Experts say this decision came down to Priebus and Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon of the right-wing news organization Breitbart News is slated to serve as Trump's chief strategist and senior counselor. Bannon was the Trump campaign CEO and is executive chairman of Breitbart News. He is known for supporting white nationalist positions and has been criticized for being racist, sexist, and anti-Semitic. In a statement, Trump said, quote, Steve and Reince are highly qualified leaders who worked well together, our campaign, and led us to a historic victory. Now I will have them both with me in the White House as we work to make America great again. The transition of power between President Obama and President-elect Trump has begun. This involves thousands of employees moving in and out of the White House. This continues during the President's first 100 days in office. Here to talk more about what to expect during this transition and the Trump's administration's first 100 days is Chris Edelson, an assistant professor in the Department of Government at American University. Thanks for joining us, Professor. Thank you. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. What can we expect out of the first 100 days of Donald Trump's presidency? So a lot of people, I think, are waiting to see what happens. I think that's a mistake. We've seen what happened in the campaign, and most disturbing. So what I mean by that is racist statements, uh, stirring divisions between Americans, uh, questioning democratic processes. Uh, and since the, the very disturbing thing on the Southern Poverty Law Center's website, they have cataloged, as of Friday, more than 200 discriminatory harassing incidents. I mean really serious stuff, like swastikas in schools, children marching in high schools shouting white power and Heil Hitler salutes. Um, a young girl, 12-year-old black girl, came home and told her parents, a white boy at my school said, Trump is president, I'm going to shoot you and other blacks. This is incredibly dangerous. We cannot wait. We need to call on elected officials to act. We, need to, we cannot expect Donald Trump to act. He said during the campaign, I'm the least racist person you ever meet. He has no self-awareness. Uh, he was asked 60, 60 minutes last night, he said, what I would say to these people harassing, who are doing harassing and discriminatory things is stop it. Mm -hmm. Not enough. We need people to speak out. There are very dangerous signs already of cracking down on dissent. Kelly and Conway, when Senator Harry Reid was speaking, just speaking about what's happened, exercising first free speech rights, Kelly and Conway said he should be careful. There could be legal implications. If U.S. senators are not free to speak, none of us can be. This is a very, very dangerous time. So President Obama and President-elect Trump met at the White House last yes. Thursday. Let's take a look at what they had to say. I believe that it is important for all of us, regardless of party uh, and regardless of political preferences, uh, to now come together, work together, to deal with uh, the many challenges that we face. Uh, so what can the president do to ease the transition between President-elect Trump and President Obama's administrations? He should not. He should not be normalizing Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a dangerous person. He is Marine Le Pen, who is involved with a, it's been described as a fascist party in France, was invited, apparently. She said, I accept your invitation, Donald Trump and Steve Bannon, to work with you. Steve Bannon, as you rightly mentioned before, I'm glad you said this, because many people describe him as a conservative. He's a white nationalist. His wife and his divorce proceedings testified Steve does not like Jewish people. He does not want our kids going to school with Jews. His, his, this is, let me read from what people have been saying about this. These are Nazi groups that, that enjoy Steve Bannon's uh, appointment to the, the cabinet or the, the, the administration. Steve Bannon, racist, anti-homo, anti anti-immigrant, anti-Jewish. Sounds perfect, Muha ha ha ha. The man will have Trump's ear more than anyone else. Being anti-Jewish is not illegal. Nothing you dirty, stinking Jews can do to keep him out. This is toxic stuff. I'm 45 years old. I've never seen this in the United States. There are always people who have said this. They've always been in the margins. They've been considered 
outside of normal discourse. Now they're in positions of power. I think President Obama is a decent man, and I mean that in, a, in the highest possible sense. He has the popularity support of the American people. Mm -hmm. He's making a mistake by normalizing Donald Trump. He should not do it. What, what would you say to people who compare Trump's appointments to, you know, campaigns of the 60s where some of the same kind of people were talked about? There's never been anyone like this in power. Steve Bannon, a, a racist nationalist, white nationalist, there's never been anyone like that in the United States in a position of power. It's unprecedented. People compare this to anything are being misleading. It is incorrect. So if you believe that Trump and the president shouldn't have like exactly a great working relationship, what can, what can we expect? Like what should they have? Everyone who understands that Donald Trump is dangerous, and many Republicans do too, Mitt Romney does, Paul Ryan during the campaign did, um, Colin Powell understands this, everyone should speak out. They should make clear this is not normal, this is not okay, this is anti-democratic, people are scared. There are children, school children going to school who are crying. I, I know, I have a friend who teaches at a school in DC, she said black children were crying the day after the election. This is not normal, it is not okay. Everyone in the United States who understands that needs to speak up, elected officials need to act now, they need to set limits on Trump's power. They should not wait to see what happens. They should assume what he said during the campaign is what he will do. He's talking about deporting millions of people. The most people have ever been deported in any single year were about 400,000 by President Obama. He's talking about three million people. That would involve, we've never seen that before in the United States. A, sec a former Republican secretary of the Department of Homeland Security said, to do things like that, we'd have to look like North Korea, police state. Um, he's talked about a ban on Muslims coming to the United States. Congress should reject that now. What would happen if there's a terrorist attack? He will go further. We should expect him to do what he said. We should expect more, and people must act, and they should not wait. They must act now. So going off of that, um, Donald Trump and congressional leaders have outlined a 100-day plan from when Trump will be sworn in, ranging from changes in immigration policy to Obamacare to nominating new Supreme Court justices. Um, what do you think about some of these changes that uh, President-elect Trump is trying to enact? I think the most important changes he's enacting is white nationalism. He has brought Steve Bannon, as I mentioned before. He has people who are saying things that were never before seen in the mainstream of American politics. He said during his campaign he would do things that would, you know, Muslims are scared in the United States. Black people are scared. Gay people are scared. Jews are scared. Emmy Rossum is a TV star. She received this tweet. Emmy Rossum, this is in all of your ilk's future. You will all be seeing a train shortly. Hollywood days of subjugation is over. Sig Heil and a picture of Auschwitz with the tracks running onto it saying Trump on it. This, I'm sorry to get angry, it's not your <laughs> fault. I am outraged. This is, this is one example. The Southern Poverty Law Center has cataloged hundreds more. It's grotesque, awful stuff, hate, literally threatening to kill people. Donald Trump said stop it, that is not enough. Members of Congress need to do more. Senator Reid very bravely is standing up to this. Where are the other senators with him? Where are they? Kellyanne Conway said, he should watch what he says. There may be legal implications for speaking up. Other people need to stand by him. Other people need to be outraged. They need to say this is wrong. But can't you also say that some of the things that Trump has said, and also Steve Bannon have said, that you know, maybe we don't necessarily see the same things that they have said. We have a clip from 60 Minutes last night talking about uh, President-elect Trump's views on Obamacare. Let's, let's take a look on that. We're not going to have like a two-day period, and we're not going to have a, a two-year period where there's nothing. It will be repealed and replaced, and we'll know. And it'll be great health care for much less money. So it'll be better health care, much better, for less money. Not a bad combination. So as you just saw, that Trump does a lot of, uh, he, he walks back a lot on his words. Well, first he has no idea what he's talking about. He sounds like a used car salesman. It'll be great health care for less money. How? You need to explain this. He's talked about he wants to preserve, and this, it's almost irrelevant to talk about these things because the important things are not the policies. This is not a political issue. It's not a partisan issue. It's a question of power and anti-democratic, and frankly, something that looks a lot like fascism coming to the United States. Um, I listened to what he said. What he's saying about Obamacare? Sh sure, fine. What he, I, I, I'm not that concerned about that. What he said during the campaign about immigration, what he said about Muslims, what he said about Mexican Americans, what people who are disabled, what Steve Bannon has said, those are the things we must be concerned about and we must assume these things will happen. I hope it does not, I hope he backs down, but we cannot assume, we cannot sit back and wait. We must assume he means what he says before it is too late to do something about it. Yeah, you know, uh, Professor Lickman projected that Donald Trump was going to win the presidency. Now he's yes. also predicting that within a year he may be impeached. Yes, I saw that. So I think, first of all, I respect Professor Lickman a, a great deal. Very astute observer. Um, I agree that it's possible Donald Trump, and I, I would actually not even wait for that. Congress should pass a law right now 
saying if, president, if a President Trump takes the United States to war without congressional authorization, it's an impeachable offense. If he tries to stop Muslims from coming to the country, an impeachable offense. If he builds detention camps for immigrants or Muslims, an impeachable offense. They should say it now, lay down the yard markers. The problem is Congress is controlled by Republicans. I, I doubt that they will actually move to impeach him. Something that really disturbed me a lot, Paul Ryan knows that Donald Trump is racist. He said that during the campaign. He was asked yesterday, what do you, Speaker Paul Ryan, think about Steve Bannon? He said, I don't know anything about him. I trust Donald Trump to make this choice. That's horrifying. He has staffers. T spend two seconds to look on Google. You will find how abominable this man is. And Paul Ryan knows it is abominable, but he is choosing party over country. And he's, there's a Simpsons episode from a long time ago that makes me think of when Krusty the Clown is deciding whether to vote for Sideshow Bob. Sideshow Bob has a platform of he wants to kill, he wants to kill Krusty the Clown, but he also wants to cut taxes for the upper class. And Krusty the Clown standing in the voting booth and he says, well, I don't like his killing Krusty Clown policy, but I'm aching for that upper class tax cut, pulls a lever. That's what Paul Ryan is doing. He's saying, he can do this one. I spoke to a Repu former Republican congressman the other day and I said, have you seen what's happening? The Ku Klux Klan is holding a victory rally. And this man says, that's unfortunate. Unfortunate? This is abominable. And these people know it and they need to speak out. It's not a partisan issue. I'm glad to see people like Governor Romney, who he said this is trickle down racism. I would use stronger words, but that's something. We need to show this is Democrats and Republicans, elected officials, Americans need to stand up. I've spoken to a lot of people who say, give this a chance, maybe it'll be okay. Let's see what happens. It will be too late. This is an American Putin. The best people to read about this, Gary Kasparov, who the chess champion who was active in Russian politics and left because he was afraid to be put in jail by Vladimir Putin. A, a journalist named Masha Gessen wrote a great piece about this on autocracy in New York Review of Books. And they both say, do not normalize this, do not treat it as normal, and you have to take, you have to assume what these people are saying, they will do. All right, well, thank you for coming on. Thank you. That was Professor Chris Edelson from uh, the School of Government at American University. Throughout his presidential campaign, Donald Trump has promised that he will assemble an experienced team to lead the executive branch. With the inauguration 66 days away, political pundits are speculating who he will appoint to key positions in his administration. Grace Reese joins us in a studio with updates on the new administration. Grace? Thanks, Stephen. The next most obvious choice to join Steve Bannon as a key Trump advisor is Kellyanne Conway. She was the first woman to successfully lead a presidential campaign. Former Speaker of the House Newt Gingrich has also been key to helping Trump establish relationships with Republicans and Speaker of the House Paul Ryan. He is set for a cabinet position, including uh, that of Secretary of State. Another person up for a cabinet position is Ben Carson, who is up for health and the Secretary of Health and Human Services and Secretary of Education. Another person who was key to Trump's success on the campaign trail was Governor Chris Christie, and he is up for the role of Attorney General. Another lesser known Republican who could be up for the role of Attorney General and Secretary of Defense is Senator from Alabama Jeff Sessions. I actually talked to someone who is close to Jeff Sessions and Donald Trump and who was there with them on election night. His name is Bob Terrell, and let's take a look at that. In the upcoming weeks, President-elect Donald Trump will be assembling his administration and working closely with his transition team to prepare for the inauguration. However, many in America still have Trump's controversial campaign on their minds. I spoke to the founder of the American Spectator magazine for his insight into who Trump really is and what could be in store for the next four years. In my relationship with the Trump Organization and my relationship with the people in politics that Donald Trump has galvanized, they are exceptionally capable and they are exceptionally courteous. He's got a unique situation. He's got a family firm that's one of the largest family firms in America. And he happens to have terrific kids. Uh, those children could well be, in time to come, his greatest monuments. Not all people believe that Trump's organization has had integrity. People who worked in his tower, who were African Americans, who were working in his tower, he did not want them there when he arrived with his clientele. Even with those revelations, the conservative movement goes on. The future of the conservative movement is that we're the last man standing, aren't we? The left, which has been dominant in America for eight years, is now utterly discredited. I don't think we're going to want to go back to this period and I think we're gonna get around it pretty easily. We have in the White House a guy that has a wonderful sense of humor and a great sense of fun. 
Uh, and I think we're going to get back to that again. And by George, I want to get back to a sense of fun and government. From Washington, I'm Grace Reese. There's no way to know for sure who Trump is actually going to appoint to his cabinet, but District Wire News is going to be following all of the updates and we'll let you know as soon as they come in. Now back to you, Stephen. Thanks, Grace. Coming up, protests across the country. Opponents of Donald Trump are taking to the streets, expressing anger and fear. Will Trump follow through with campaign promises that could threaten minority groups? That story straight ahead. And Republicans successfully managed to maintain control of Congress. So what will Democrats do now? What are they doing to organize and mobilize for the next big election? We've got expert analysis straight ahead. <laughs> 